Hello. Welcome back to another episode of Manhunt. Episode 2 recap and ending explained. Did John Surratt plan Lincoln's assassination? Warning! Spoilers ahead, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Secretary Stanton's regret persisted in Manhunt Episode 2, post-mortem. It was urgent to find Booth. Therefore, the detectives apprehended the man who had rented Booth the horse. He said that Booth had a man named David Herold with him when questioned. To Stanton's astonishment, Weichmann, a police officer, came forward and claimed that his landlady had participated in the plot. During questioning, Mary Elizabeth Jenkins Surratt, the owner of a boarding house in Washington, D.C., attempted to maintain her account that she had just lent Booth her utensils. However, she became frightened when Lewis Powell, who had blood all over his coat, entered her boarding room. Put together, Secretary Stanton and his group were working on puzzle parts that were larger than expected. Booth had assistance from a number of individuals and the resources he needed to carry out his plan. He did not act alone. Those close to Stanton were worried about his deteriorating health, but he wouldn't stop working until he solved the mystery and identified the assassin. Why was Johnson, the vice president, seen as a suspect? The justification Lewis Powell offered was that Mrs. D. Surratt had asked him to clear the gutter, but she denied ever knowing him. When it became clear that they were lying, Powell and Mrs. Dinnerer Surratt were both taken into custody following a brief struggle. Stanton learned that Johnson had received a call from Booth the night he was meant to be killed. Johnson was likewise taken aback, considering he had no personal relationship with Booth. The fact that Johnson was the only target spared led to conjecture in the end. The German immigrant decided not to carry out the plan after becoming too inebriated, according to information gathered by Stanton's team. Nonetheless, this was not a convincing enough excuse. President Lincoln's perspective did not coincide with Andrew Johnson's. He made it quite evident right away that expanding the economy would be his main priority, rather than doing away with slavery or advancing their rights. The announcement of Johnson as the next president of the United States did not sit well with everyone. Many feared that Johnson's policies would reduce the advancements made by Lincoln to nothing. The Wall Street speculators whose names surfaced in the oil rig investment, the Confederacy, and even Johnson were all suspected by Lafayette Baker, an investigator and spy for the Union Army. As per his hypothesis, Johnson stood to gain the greatest advantage from Lincoln's demise, perhaps rendering him a suspect in the case. Johnson was forced to ensure that the investigation was completed in order to demonstrate his innocence, since any hint of hesitancy would have led to accusations of his involvement. Why was Booth's time running out? After spending a few days at Dr. Kearney Samuel Mudd's residence, John Wilkes Booth and David Herold traveled to Richmond, Virginia, the Confederate capital. However, things had gotten rather serious as word of the assassination spread widely. Mudd could not put himself in danger by visiting stores more frequently than normal to get supplies. Since Booth's sketch was displayed everywhere, and there was a good potential that someone would ultimately recognize him, David suggested that Booth get rid of his mustache. However, Booth refused to shave since he enjoyed his mustache and thought it made him stand out. Booth wanted to spend some time basking in his own glory because he was so pleased with himself. Herold gave David the duty of bringing him whiskey and horse feed, but Herold quickly discovered that horse feed was illegal in Maryland. He understood that the government would stop at nothing to obtain them. Therefore, they had to head for Virginia right now. When Mary, Mudd's housekeeper, was called in to shave him, Booth grew irate. He was a bigot who wasted no time in expressing his hate. When Mary held the blade to his neck, he became fearful. Despite her good intentions, he was dubious of her motivation because of his guilt. He was afraid that people he treated less humanely than himself would kill him because he was an oppressor. Thank you for watching. And don't hesitate to leave us a comment below, Manhun.